Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. It's Thursday, July 23rd. This is your afternoon update. I'm Stephanie Haney. We have a lot to get through. We will be talking about what Governor Mike DeWine is saying about House Bill 6, which is tied to the scandal related to the arrest of Ohio Speaker of the House, Larry Householder. We'll also be talking about changes to county alert levels as those came out today during Governor Mike DeWine's press conference. The new numbers related to COVID-19 here in Ohio from the Ohio Department of Health. Who says it's not their job to enforce the mask mandate? Another teachers association calling for remote learning in the fall through at least January. And also what we know about another possible stimulus package. Let's start first with Ohio Governor Mike DeWine calling for repealing House Bill 6. House Bill 6 is the bill that's tied to the center of the scandal related to Ohio Speaker of the House Larry Householder. House Bill 6 provided for the bailout of two state nuclear power plants. Now, Governor Mike DeWine is saying that he agrees with the policy of bailing out the plants, but he's calling for House Bill 6 to be repealed due to the process, allegedly, that led to its passing. Now, this scandal has been called by officials as the largest bribery case ever in Ohio, involving potentially up to $60 million. Householder was arrested on Tuesday along with four others for their alleged roles in a scheme in which First Energy is believed to have paid the defendant $60 million through a dark money organization, which they used to get Householder promoted to the Speaker of the House, pass House Bill 6, and defeat a ballot initiative to overturn the legislation. Now, House Bill 6 is a $1 billion bailout for the power plants, and that was to be funded by rate surcharges to customers over the next several years. It would be $150 million per year, and that was in the form of surcharges ranging from $0.85 cents for residential customers up to $2,400 for factory customers. Now, DeWine says Ohio does need a balanced energy policy, and he still supports the bill and hopes that it's replaced with something similar, but he said due to the manner in which it's alleged that House Bill 6 was passed, it's only fair for the process to play again with transparency. DeWine said the most important thing is that the public has confidence in the process. Earlier this week, DeWine called for the resignation of Larry Householder. Now let's take a look at changes that Governor Mike DeWine announced today. <clears throat> changes that Governor Mike DeWine announced today when it comes to the county alert levels. Remember, prior to the statewide mandate, which goes into effect today at 6 p.m., if you were under a level three alert in your county, that meant that masks were mandated in public. However, that's not the case anymore because it is statewide at this point. The following counties have been upgraded to a level three. Clark, Defiance, Erie, Hardin, Henry, Lawrence, Marion, and Medina. The following counties have been downgraded, however, to a level two alert. Lorraine and Summit counties, as well as Butler and Wood counties. Athens County has been removed from the watch list, which was being watched to increase to that most serious level, that level four alert. We have a breakdown of the changes in the counties on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Now let's talk about the latest numbers when it comes to COVID-19 released from the Ohio Department of Health this afternoon. The total number of Ohio cases that we've seen dating back to March 9th has now surpassed 80,000 in the state of Ohio. New hospitalizations and ICU admissions are slightly down according to the new daily reported numbers. The total number of confirmed cases that we've had here in Ohio since March 9th is now 80,000 186. Now we saw a slight decrease in the new daily reported numbers today. There were 1,444 new reported confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the state of Ohio reported within the last 24 hours. Now that does not mean that those cases actually tested positive within the last 24 hours. There is a delay on getting those tests back, but they were reported to the Ohio Department of Health within the past 24 hours. Right now, our most recent daily percent positive rate is 6.4%. That means for all of the tests that we're doing, 6.4% have come back positive. That's up from yesterday's most up-to-date number, which was 5.9%, and our rolling seven-day positivity rate is still 6.3%. So that 6.4% of that most recent positivity rating is still above the recommended World Health Organization threshold of 5%. We saw a slight increase in new deaths reported in the last 24 hours as well. There were 21 new deaths reported 
According to the latest data from the Ohio Department of Health, bringing the total number of deaths in Ohio to now 3,256. The number of new hospitalizations, however, is slightly down. We saw 104 new hospitalizations reported in the last 24 hours, bringing that total to just under 10,000. That number is 9,968 total hospitalizations dating back to March related to COVID-19. And right now, there are now just over 1,100 people actively in the hospital today. There are 1,105 people who have been actively reported as in the hospital. 365 of those people are receiving treatment in an intensive care unit. That's about 33% of all people who are hospitalized are currently getting treatment today in an intensive care unit. There were 17 new ICU admissions reported in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of people who have been in the ICU related to COVID-19 to now 2,403. Now let's take a look at the national and global numbers, which we get from Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is getting closer and closer to 4 million cases of COVID-19 reported. The total number of cases is now 3,998,259 across the U.S. That's just over 73,000 new cases reported in the last 24 hours. The total number of deaths in the U.S. is now 143,701 with 1,300 new deaths reported in the last 24 hours. And if you compare the number of deaths to the known reported cases of COVID-19, that's a 3.6% death rate in the U.S. As compared to globally, the U.S. has about 26% of the total cases in the world and about 23% of the known deaths in the world related to COVID-19. Globally, there have now been 15,301,530 reported cases of COVID-19, and there have been 625,005 reported deaths related to COVID-19. Making that death rate, comparing the number of deaths to the total number of known cases globally, 4.1%. Now, as we take a look at how the, go the COVID-19 numbers are changing around the globe, we can tell you now that 75% of Americans say they support mask wearing in public. This is according to a survey from the Associated Press NORC Center for Public Affairs Research. That study also found that two-thirds of Americans disapprove of how President Donald Trump is handling this pandemic. When they broke it down along party lines, support for requiring masks is very overwhelming among Democrats, according to this study. 89% of Democrats support wearing masks in public, and 58% of Republicans, the majority, also support wearing masks in public. Now, this poll was conducted before President Donald Trump, who for many months was dismissive of wearing masks, said this week that it's actually patriotic to wear a mask and was recently seen wearing one in public for one of the first times. Now there's a lot of conversation about how enforcement is going to look when it comes to this mask mandate here in Ohio and a Southwest Ohio Sheriff's Office is telling citizens not to call them for mask mandate violations. This is the Dark County Sheriff's Office. It's located on the Ohio-Indiana border just outside of Dayton and they posted on Facebook yesterday. They said, we're receiving calls about the mandatory mask wear issued by the governor. We are not the mask police. Please do not call us or 911 reporting someone wearing a mask. They ended the statement saying, come on, people, a little common sense goes a long way. Thank you. Now, of course, all 88 counties in Ohio are required to have people wear masks in public. That starts at 6 p.m. today. Individuals will have to wear a face covering while they're inside an indoor location that is not a residence, while you're outdoors, anywhere where you can't keep six feet from people that don't live in your household and whenever you're waiting for any form of public transportation, and that does include a ride share that you might be using by yourself with just the other person who is driving that vehicle. There are exclusions to the rule. We do have those up on WKYC.com and the rule applies to people over the age of 10, so age 10 and under, and also people who have medical issues that prevent them from wearing a mask are exempt from the statewide mask mandate. Now here in the city of Cleveland, there are no questions about who to report someone to if you see a business or an individual who is not following the mask mandate. If a business is not practicing things in line with the safety protocols and not enforcing proper mask usage, you can call the Cleveland Department of Health's hotline. That's at 216-857-7165. Again, that's 216-857-7165. That's the number to call if you need to report a business 
that is not following the mandate. If you want to report an individual, either at a private residence or in a public space that is not following the mandate, you can call the Cleveland Police's non-emergency line. That's 216-621-1234. Again, that's the Cleveland Police's non-emergency line. If you would like to report an individual who is not following the mask mandate, that's at 216-621-1234. Now here in the city of Cleveland, it's a civil penalty if you are found to be not complying with that mask mandate. That means it's a fines only situation. Violations for individuals are $25. Business owners, however, could face $1,000 fines on the first offense and $3,000 fines on subsequent offenses. The city can also shut down the business if it's found to be a public health nuisance. Now, as we look at COVID-19 and what that's looking like into the fall, another teachers association has called for remote learning through January. Now the Cleveland Heights Teachers Union is calling for schools to reopen online only through January. The Shaker Heights Teachers Association said something very similar this week. The Cleveland Heights Teachers Union President Karen Rigo said that her union is demanding that the, dr the district instead initially open only online until January. She says our teachers and support staff most certainly want to be with their students. However, beyond the fact COVID-19 cases are spreading at an alarming rate throughout the county and the state, her members have serious concerns about the capacity of the school district to guarantee a safe teaching and learning environment for students and staff. She noted there are several matters that should be addressed before schools open with students and teachers present. Rigo said the safety of students, staff, and community, and they are recommending that Cleveland Heights University Heights City Schools, based on the fact that the safety of students, staff, and community are of the utmost importance, begin with remote learning and do so through January. Some of the things that are of a concern for the district include a lack of availability of PPE for all students, that's personal protective equipment, the impractical nature of enforcing a mandate for all students to wear masks, how difficult that will be for the school system. <laughs> excuse me, inability, <coughs> excuse me, inability of students to physically distance in various settings, a lack of trust that buildings will be consistently cleaned properly, a lack of quarantine space for students and teachers, and also safety for high risk students and teachers. Now, as we continue, to see what's going to happen with COVID-19 moving forward, Republicans are now unveiling a $1 trillion COVID-19 rescue package. This is considered an opening bid in talks with Democrats in a negotiation that could be kind of tenuous, even much more difficult than the negotiation that led to the $2 trillion rescue package that already we experienced. So. We do know some of the things that we can expect in this package. This is based on a Republican who was granted anonymity to discuss the plans. At the centerpiece of the package will be a liability shield to protect businesses, schools, and others from coronavirus-related lawsuits. Very hot topic there. Something else we can expect, actually not expect, is no new money for states and cities, which are definitely having a hard time coming up with funds. We do know here in Ohio, there has had to be federal money borrowed in order to pay unemployment claims. But what we can expect is about $105 billion to help schools reopen and $15 billion for childcare centers to hopefully create safe environments for children that need childcare. One thing that the Republicans and the Democrats do seem to agree on at this point is another round of $1,200 checks to most American adults. Now this is rather than a payroll tax cut that President Donald Trump reportedly wanted, which also might hold up the negotiations according to the Republican who spoke on the condition of anonymity. Now that $600 weekly unemployment benefit boost that is expected to expire on Friday is expected to be reduced potentially to $200 and then ultimately adjusted according to state jobless benefit rates. Now some Republicans say that boost is a disincentive to work as there have been many situations where people have been talking about making more money with that boost on unemployment than they did when they were actually working. However, there are some Republicans who are pushing for an extension, at least a temporary extension of that current $600 benefit if they're not able to get something worked out before that ends, which is at the end of this week. Something else that the bill is expected to be silent on, which is a sticking point for Democrats, is 
the potential housing crisis because there's a federal eviction moratorium on millions of rental units that will also expire within days. Now that's a sticking point for Democrats because they want to see that addressed in something that gets passed relatively quickly. Speaking of Washington, Washington's NFL team has decided to go by the Washington Football Club for now. And that will be the official name for the time being while the official name is pending. So this is only a temporary situation. That's what the team announced today. The team colors will remain burgundy and gold. And the logo for now will be replaced by player numbers displayed in gold. Now, this is not the final name, but this is just... A temporary name until a final decision is made and they hope to have a final decision on a new name by September 13th. That's when their season starts. They'll be hopefully debuting new uniforms in week one against the Philadelphia Eagles. That'll be at home and then their new away uniforms they hope to debut during week two against the Cardinals. The team says that fans will be able to buy Washington football team merchandise from the team's NFL shop and Fanatics in the next couple of days. Now Again, this is not the permanent team name and not the permanent team logo. So I could definitely see some of this stuff becoming a collector's item. So if you are a Washington football fan, you might want to grab some of that merchandise. It's going to be available within the next couple, couple of days. The NFL season kicks off on September 10th. That will kick off with the Kansas City Chiefs hosting the Houston Texans here in Cleveland. The season is supposed to kick off on September 13th. The Browns will be away against the Baltimore Ravens. So not here in Cleveland, actually in Baltimore, but you know what I mean. We're looking at where the Cleveland Browns will be playing first for the 2020 NFL season. That will be away at Baltimore, assuming things go as planned, because we do know that the preseason has been canceled at this point. An opening day that is very close is Major League Baseball opening day here in Cleveland. We'll be hosting the Kansas City Royals at Progressive Field on Friday, it is almost opening day. We have all the information you need on WKYC.com and you just have to text the word TRIBE to 216-344-3300 and you will get a link sent right to your phone with everything you need to know about opening day and the return of baseball here in Cleveland. That is it for your 3 News Now afternoon update for Thursday, July 23rd. I will see you next at 5 p.m. on What's New, which you can stream for free in our WKYC app if you download that. Also, you want to update that so you can make sure you send us your photos and you can see the stories that are happening near you with our new Near Me feature. Check that out. I just tweeted out a video about how to use the Near Me feature today. You can find that at underscore Stephanie Haney. Everyone enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I will see you back here tomorrow morning. I'm Stephanie Haney.